There you go. James? I can't hear you, James. Uh, Bonjour, everyone. Welcome to a very late and live edition of Cafe Day, Renee. Renee, you have an apology. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I thought I was taking a 10-minute quick snooze, and here we are, 7.47, and um, I am sorry. And I can't believe that Maven Huffman and Flash Flanagan you guys had nothing better to do. Hung in there. <laughs> Thank you. Nothing. Thank you so much for doing that, guys. I apologize. I I, I told you, Renee. I was wor I was more worried than anything. Oh, because I know because I know if if anybody's going to be late on here, it's me. It ain't you. I know. It's so, really cool. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh yeah. I don't know. I'm Puerto Rican now. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an, I'm an adopted Puerto Rican. And yeah. in I'll be I'll be honest, Renee. I just thought you and the missus probably had an argument because that's normally what happens to me. <laughs> No, no, she just nudged me. She goes, don't you have a podcast to do? And I'm like, right. what, what time it is? 740. Holy shit. I thought it was early because, fuck. We just had a time change here too, right? It was, uh, we just had our time change. Yeah, yeah. But we spring forward. Hold on. We did ours like two weeks ago. Did yeah. Did y'all yeah. well, we did did but... do y'all's like at noon? <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. Yeah, well, it's a Canadian yeah. thing. It's a Canadian. Listen, R Renee, I'm just <laughs> yeah. happy. I'm just happy you're okay, brother. I'm oh, just happy man. you're okay. God, guys, thank you so much for waiting in on me. And uh, Be anyway. being late, being late can be forgiven. That's fine. Well, I'm late. Brother. I'm late every 95 percent of the places I go in life. So. I got the fact that be well, they always say if they're going to be late, be really late so they're happier to show up than being just a little late. Then they're jumping in a case for showing up yeah. late. Yeah. Right. right. Well, thanks to the 169, well, 67 we just lost to, but you guys are <laughs> in there too. Wow. Damn. So, um, maybe, man, what's going on? Like, are you still king of um, podcasting? I mean, well, that's king of podcast. That's you. That's you. I'm the I'm the uh, the prince of uh, trying to figure out YouTube's algorithm still. <laughs> oh, it's amazing though. Like your videos, dude. It's like I look in like two hours, you get like three hundred thousand views. I'm like, how does he do it? Like, yeah, dude. It's I t it's I told you. I've it's the guy I work with. He literally he knows. You know, just and there's keys to knowing what an audience it's all about content there's keys to knowing what is what it is an audience is gonna right. you know want to watch i've told you before and i won't bore you again it's because there's a lot of people that think other people should have more viewers and they probably should but mm -hmm. i think we just genuinely put out just good stuff interesting stuff yeah. and you know i won't even watch them until the day before they go out and hell i did the damn thing and they they're interesting to me you know, because I'll forget them by the time you know that it's the day before. <laughs> well, I wrote I wrote the the title to the description or whatever. Yeah, I said the world's most funniest man, Maven Hoffman, and I know <laughs> Mister Mister Entertainment to me. Uh, hey, but do you you must have met Flash Flying in, yeah, in your travel from HWA. Yeah, I, we were just talking while while you went off to go. Uh, why you went off to go grab your tweezers? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Um, I met him through I met him through uh, Stephen Bradley down in HWA. Mofo uh, Steve Bradley. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> who who they sent to Puerto Rico and forgot he was in Puerto Rico? God, exactly. did you ever hear that story? Yeah, yeah. What well, apparently Steve Bradley with Pete Gas, right? I don't know who was with him, but I, all I know is. They sent him to Puerto Rico when he was under, had the developmental deal and forgot where he was. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Not for a while. Rico. For a while. Yeah, he was there yeah. for almost a year. And uh, yeah. I think he called up Bruce Pritchard and he's like, hey, uh, just wondering uh, if, you know, if you got anything for me or what? Oh, we forgot you were down there. Yeah. What a rip, right? Yeah. I think the only thing back then was it was probably his size. 
I'd imagine, because they were just looking for those monster looks. Yeah. Men, right? He could work, though. He was good. Fuck. God, he was good. He was so good. Yeah. I, from the second, uh, uh, like the first rope, then the second yeah. rope, then jump all the way up to the third and just fucking do moonsaults. Yeah. And, no. I was just talking about this yesterday on a podcast because uh, you ever see the with the old Memphis stuff where when Randy Savage to go he takes off running and dies over the announce table on to Ricky Morton and he's he's feud with Rock and Roll Express but he just comes running out of nowhere leaps over on him and uh, I, I all the stuff Savage did down there in Memphis is like I thought was cool so like. Man, one of these times when I was down there, I always wanted to come out there during an angle and run, dive over the announce table and attack them. And <laughs> so this time, uh, this is power pro wrestling now, and Steve's a heel and I'm a heel, and we're we're just building this up with me and him hating each other. So he's up on they have it up on a platform. So I really got to jump now. And uh, I made it over. I don't know how it looked because I've never seen the tape. But uh, I finally got to do it. So <laughs> <laughs> I can't, that was one of my mark moves I got to do down there. I got one move in. <laughs> What's and this? then I was supposed, supposed to hit with a fire extinguisher. And I walk up to him being all cool. Looked up at him, pulled the pin. Nothing happens. And I'm like, oh, God. So I had him pop him with the... The fire extinguisher. Oh, so what? Yeah. You get like a dud? It was a dud uh, fire Nothing extinguisher? Nothing came out at all. Yeah, I've had I've that. Never, I've, I've had never that even happen. used a fire extinguisher before. I've had that happen. If <laughs> sometimes, sometimes they like if, if they've been used before, that gas, the pressure, it's it's been released and you get nothing out of mm. it. Yeah, but yeah, I did the exact same thing you did. Went to I spray shot him nothing, but then just then just <laughs> shot like, it with. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of ways that could go. I, yeah, I was, I was going to use a, I could use like a dirty uh, analogy, yeah. but uh, no. Renee, I did the reverse Stephen Bradley when I was in HWA. When oh. they put me on the road after, um, I want to say probably after Mania, and they yeah. started making me do house shows, right. and I was supposed to go back to developmental and work, and I did that for like two weeks. And I was like, man, this sucks going here, working for four days and then going on the road doing house shows. So I just told him that I told uh, who was, was it Howard Finkel that was doing our travel at that yeah. time. I told Fink, I was like, just fly me to Virginia. And they, they never said anything to me. Like, literally, I never went, I never went back. Wow. And they never said anything to me. I thought they're going to get so much fucking heat for this. Nothing. Wow. Never, never heard anything from it. Well, they, they, I got fired four years later, so maybe I probably, <laughs> probably should have went back. <laughs> Johnny Ace wanted to send me to Cincinnati, and uh, Cornette was like, no, don't worry about it. You're not going anywhere. You're going to stay right here. So mm. I, uh, I'm squashing that real quick. You're not taking well, it. Well, yeah, OV, OVW was definitely the better of the two programs, and it wasn't even close. It wasn't and, I mean, I, I like Les. I, I knew Les – Thatcher from yeah. Smoky Mountain Wrestling. Mm -hmm. Whenever I was there, he was the uh, the announcer. Yeah. So yeah, Les yeah. Thatcher, he's still alive and kicking, right? He, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I just brought just brought this up. Did anyone catch Punk's interview with Ariel Helwani? Anybody? I did not. Flash. Yeah, I have no idea who this who's. You don't yeah. know who's who, who. I know who Punk is. I know who he, I know him. <laughs> but who? James, is yeah. anybody talking about this in the in the wrestling world? I just woke up. Quite, quite a few people. <laughs> uh, a lot of AEW wrestlers as well. Looks like they're upset about the comments. I got to be honest. I don't even know if Ariel's a man or a woman. Um, it's a man. He um, he's got heat with Dana White UFC because. He's not scared to speak his opinion, but um, okay. basically Dana White calls him like a shit starer, trying to stare the pot. Oh. Um, obviously, Punk loves MMA, so um, Ariel Hamani covers UFC, but he covers wrestling as well. He's a Canadian boy. Okay. Oh, the Steve, he's Canadian. Shit starers. 
<laughs> yeah, those Canadian guys. What were the comments, James? <laughs> yeah, uh, Tony Khan was the main one. So, um, so when he was back in London, then they have that scrum with um, oh, Jack Perry, Jungle Boy. Mm-hmm. And he said to Jungle Boy, he said, why are you doing this, um, you know, dumb internet shit on TV? So Jack Perry said to him, what are you going to do about it? So yeah. basically, according to Punk, Punk put him in the code. And then Samoa Joe was like, right, let him up now. Like and then shoot? he turned. Oh, shoot, shoot. Yeah. yeah. Then he turned to Tony Khan and said, this place is a fucking joke. You're a clown. I quit. Wow. Was that that was in Wembley? That was Wembley, and um, I don't think he spoke to Tony Khan since then. After, like, the largest gate yeah, reportedly ever, ever in attendance yeah. for that. Is, is that shoot, or is that bullshit? <laughs> well, on, Os- Osprey got yeah. the tattoo, didn't he? Oh, Osprey got, the, Osprey got the tattoo, like, 83,000 <laughs> or whatever. Right. And I think the legit number was, uh, I don't know, about 73, 74. And a couple of days later, Osprey made a video and said, oh, man, I got a fucking tattoo in me. And he started laughing, <laughs> pissing himself, laughing about it. He's like, do you know how much my mother's going to kill me for getting a tattoo or something like that? But, no. um, but yeah, that's the story. <laughs> okay. Regardless, it was still an impressive show. Oh, yeah. Still an impressive house. Mm-mm. I think at the minute, I think they've sold about 40,000 tickets at the minute. For, oh, for the next one? Yeah, they're going back uh, this year. I think they've sold about 40 at the minute, but I don't think it's till August, so they've got a bit of time left. But here's the I know thing, WWE's man. selling out This at the must minute. piss off a lot of people. Like Towards the end, they were giving away tickets for like a fiver. Like five yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've got friends who went, and they said you could pick up a ticket for a five pound. Yeah, so... But, you but at that point, they just, they just wanted people to fill the arena just for the appearance, for aesthetics. Right, yeah. But that's the thing, man. You've been to England, uh, maybe, and you know how. Yeah, it's a huge stadium. Oh yeah, it. yeah. Well, and it's st- and and the way that in America we can you know overwork cities, it's the opposite there. Right. They're hung. They're hungry for it. They want it. Yeah. 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 You been over to the UK much, Flash? No. Uh, after I got back from Puerto Rico, I had called Brian Dixon. Yeah. And I was working on going over there, but it was one of those, he, you had to buy your ticket over there and then they buy your ticket back oh, okay. that, that way. And that's when at that moment, I was thinking about doing it just to, for the experience. Right. Yeah. But then I met my future wife and the devil you got the devil on one side and the angel on the other, and the devil took over, and uh, I'm in the United States still. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know, I know. We know how that goes. <laughs> Favorite call in wrestling history. My three are as good as my witness. He's broken in half. The ir- irresistible force, meaning the immovable object, and he beat Andre the Giant with that move. Peace, boys. Okay. Mm. What's, your f- what's your favorite call in, in wrestling? So are you, James. Janet had escaped through the window. Do you remember? Barbershop. Okay. When Sean threw him through the window, Bobby Heenan. Janet just tried to escape through the window. Probably <laughs> every time uh, Girl of Monsoon would go to Bobby Heenan. Oh, would you stop it? <laughs> what about you? I like, is this thing on? Is We're live, thing on? Sid. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I have a specific, like, the you know, definite one. I'd have, I'm gonna have to think on that one. Yeah, that's about, oh, I bought, oh, boy, uh, Jim Ross. Oh, my god, that boy's got a family. <laughs> yeah, every, time, match. every time you hear it, just slobber knocker. There's a slobber knocker. There's a slobber knocker. <laughs> Michael Cole, is he known for anything like that? I don't know. I I said in a video that like you know, and I didn't mean like the voice of wrestling all the guys like Michael Cole, the voice of wrestling, and I got shit all over. People were like, Michael Cole is you'd have thought I kicked somebody's you know puppy. They were mad. They were like, Michael Cole is not the voice of wrestling. 
Right. But I guess for a certain generation, he kind of sort of is. Yeah. Like, like yeah, I'm old. Plus he is. Yeah. Sure like, great. in my head, I still hear Tony Schiavone. Because I grew up watching N- NWA. Right. I right. still hear his voice, you know. How old are you, Maven? 47. Oh, well, shoot. Okay. I never would have guessed it. No. No, God bless no. you. I turned no. I turned fifty this Saturday coming up. You this upcoming look, Saturday? Yeah. Oh look, my God. You don't, look a, you don't look a day over forty nine, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Maven, thoughts on Diddy Alec. Dude. Ooh. That's a I, like you my thoughts? If yeah. he's guilty, fucking get him. Like I look, if he did half the things that they're alleging. I hope he fuck. I hope they bury him under the jail. Like get his ass. I. It's just we. It's sickening seeing all these people that's had money. That just. I don't care how much money you have or don't have. Right. You still need to treat people with respect and just dignity. And these people that have all this money that think that they can just shit on whoever they come across, and there's going to be no repercussions because they can buy their way out of it. It's just it's it's bullshit. Oh, Conway. now that that said, if he's innocent, sorry. <laughs> right, right. Uh, what do you think started? Was it the Cat Williams interview that started it all? I think so. I think so. What you talking about? The one where he was with Shannon Sharp? Yes, yes. Yeah, because he pretty much predicted exactly, and oh, it no. wasn't like a prediction. It was a. I know something you don't know. I know something you don't know. Mm. And he and he <laughs> sent him after, and it was true, or it's allegedly to be true. Allegedly, dude. allegedly, <laughs> shit like that. I mean, that that gets people killed in Hollywood, doesn't it? Dude, that's uh, yeah. Right. I know one thing. At some bitch, his ale- the allegations came out, and he was wheels up ten minutes later. <laughs> and he's been in a and he's been in a non extradition country since I think. Right. Well, I must be in a coma. What happened? Oh shit! You don't know? No. Oh god! <laughs> wow, who, like go, James, you probably know better than we do. It's just basically it's like Hollywood, isn't it? And uh, I guess allegedly the stuff happening with Vince now. Uh, yeah. He did. He's been up to a lot of shady shit with yeah under underage kids and stuff. And um, with yeah. Yeah, pretty much that with underage kids. With I, I think there was like some. What I, I don't want to say, I don't because I don't know. But imagine Vince McMahon's with the volume turned up, his allegations with way more over somehow a longer span of time, because I mean, they were saying his stuff goes back to the nineties. Yeah. And I love Bad Boys for Life too. Uh, will never be the same if it's true. If <laughs> right, <laughs> Fuck, I love that tune. Fuck. Oh man, yeah. Um, let's get to the super chats, James. You're part of again. I am sorry, folks. Okay, <laughs> did it ever happen that you know you took a nap and you overslept? Hey, Renee, before we get to the super chats, are you going to be in um Philly for Mania weekend at all? No, fuck no. Ah, okay. I wanted to get together with you to do. A, I had a good video idea with you. Oh, I was hoping you were going to be there, great. but that's okay. We're we'll still get it done. We'll um, still get it done. shit, yeah. I'll be in New York area because you you're in New York, correct? I am. Okay, I am. April twenty sixth to the twenty eighth. You got to. Oh, up. okay. All right. How far are you from Queens? I, I mean, it depends on it depends on traffic. So that yeah. I'm that close. It depends on traffic. It depends on traffic, like an yeah. hour. Like, oh god, on. if if less than that. <laughs> oh shit! Okay, we're okay yeah. for, for real. Okay, yeah, definitely. I'll bring you some gold bond. Huh? I'll bring you some gold bond. <laughs> okay, okay. Can you bring me an alarm clock too? <laughs> <laughs> Are there many former WWE wrestlers, especially from your generation, who, after working for WWE, decided to never work for WWE again? Unlike Rene, for example. Oh, that like they got so no. depressed that they said, "Fuck wrestling! I don't want anything to do with it." I'm all well, sure. The the way I read that is for WWE. They stay in the wrestling business. They just don't want to work for WWE. Right? You, is that how you read it? You guys read um, it? I yeah um yeah I guess 
Um, I can think of two guys right now that were really good, and after they they were up there and they were done, I guess they had bad experience and they quit the business. Danny Jeter. Bad. Okay. Jeter was one of them. Yeah. And uh damage it. Damage it. Yeah. Yep. 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 Johnny Jeter. Both yep. of them and both those guys were good. But great. Right. Yeah. Damn. Uh, I guess Doug Basham, I guess he's back into it, but he took a pretty long hiatus yeah. away. He still him. looks good too. I saw him oh, down in, I I saw him down with Al. He still looks like he could go. Oh, he can, bro. That that yeah. uh, Netflix show, The Wrestlers. Did you catch yep. that? Absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. Awesome. It was so good. And yeah. I went down and, uh, and, and I went down to OVW like about two months ago. And yeah, Doug still looks great. Because he you know he's like Al's like right hand man down in OVW. I mean that's a good spot for him because Doug yes. knew his shit, man. He was good. Danny Davis is a nephew, and Danny trained yep. him right. You know, yep. Well, I mean, Flash, Danny trained you from the bottom up too, right? No, no, I came, I started. It's my my career is weird how everything went. Okay. There, I was told there was a wrestling ring in a building in my hometown because okay. first I was going to go to Canada. I, you, you ever see them in the magazines? They have the yeah. Hart Brothers training camp and all yep. that. Yeah, so I, I, I got that. that, and then I contacted Red Bastine, and because I knew I seen where he trained Boyer and Sting, not realizing at the time how bad Boyer really was. His Boyer was horrible. Yeah, <laughs> but Red Bastine goes, I don't train anybody anymore. But here, Bill Anderson, he trains out in San Bernardino. So I contacted him, but then a buddy of mine told me, "Hey, over to the, on the street, in this old building, they got a wrestling ring in there." And I'm like, "Oh, really?" So I just kept driving by over there, and there was never any cars, and the door was always locked. And I, I kept thinking, "Man, I break in here, I'm gonna steal this ring. <laughs> I'll take it home, I'll put it up in my garage, and I'll try learn that way." <laughs> well, it was uh, right after WrestleMania when they were in Indianapolis. And I went over there the following week, and there were guys there. And I walked in there, and they started, and I joined right then. And then that's when they brought Rip in, and Rip tortured me because I was yeah. 175 pounds. Rip just murdered me. And uh, I was, he split me open. I, 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 it, I owed him money, it looks like. <laughs> but, but, but those uh, guys back, those guys back then, their whole goal was to weed out the people that yes. didn't really want to do it. Right. And, uh, he, when I came back and my chest, mm. it was purple. Yeah. It was, it was just, it was, um, you've seen guys get chopped a million times. Oh, yeah. And it's, they just like abuse them, like the Battle Royals, when the initiations and all that. Mm -hmm. Well, I chopped Rip. It was lousy. He spun me around. Bam, bam, bam. I spun him around. Lousy one. He spun me back around. Bam, bam, bam. I took, I don't know, 12, 15 of them, maybe. And I was, he opened me up and I was bleeding. Wow. And I came back the next day. He like, you must want to be a wrestler because yeah. I really did not think you would show back up. Right. And then from there on, things went crazier and crazier. <laughs> it used to be like that way in Japan, but but the 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 kid that was um, the kid that for like the trial, or whatever, like basically the the trainer did that to him, and then the parents fucking threatened to sue him. So. Yeah, so like now, like even in Japan, where you know, I mean, their training was fucking back in the yeah. day. They wouldn't let you drink water. Wow! Like you'd have to in the middle of a July summer, you'd be training in the dojos for hours, and they wouldn't let you have water yeah. because uh, just to see if you want it, right? Yeah, you know, crazy. Well, and, and I kind of agree with it. 
Well, yeah, just just for the fact that there's guys that get in the ring that really, when you look at it, it's like really this guy's in the ring. It it, it it's it's just, I don't know. Some guys just don't belong in the ring. Right. Yeah. And it all depends. It all depends. I know because I, I go to occasionally go to Brian School, uh, create a pro. There, it's it's weird because sometimes there's some people that their life dream is just to be a wrestler and to wrestle a match. And, you know, it's, so it's hard to – you want to give guys like that an opportunity. They know they're not going to go anywhere. They know they're not going to be, you know, waiting for a call-up or a tryout match or a dark match, you know. Mm-hmm. But then you got schools like, like Booker has at, in Houston – where it's a little bit more serious and you know i mean he has the luxury of you know not taking talent and i think when you are at that level then you have every right to do that we people out get rid of the fucking get rid of the people that don't want to be there it's basically just take your money and yeah we'll take your money beat you up and send you on your way exactly i mean that i don't agree with i would just be like look you really this you should think about something else. Well, yeah, yeah. Take two, take two weeks off, and then quit. <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, it's it's weird because I know that that like for some people, I've literally met people that their their little dream is to just go out and wrestle an indie show. And I mean, I want to be like aim higher, you know. That's <laughs> that's <laughs> your, your dream is my literal like bad weekend. Like, ah, right. oh, fuck, you know, but right. hey, to each their own, you know, if that's what they want to do, then more power to them. I always tell anybody, because I'm sure you guys get asked all the time. If anyone asks me, the only thing I tell them is find someone who knows what they're doing. That's going to teach you how to work safe because you want to work, work safe for you and for whoever you're going to be in the ring with. And that's the problem with the business today. Yep. You got guys going out there doing so much stupid stuff. It's dumb. That from, they from don't the protect start. the guy they're working with. And it's like, hey, I, and I've done plenty of dumb things myself in the ring, but I never hurt anybody. If I hurt anybody, I, I ended up hurting myself. I took care of everyone I was ever in the ring with. Yeah. It's like, I made sure I didn't hurt anyone. Yeah. And if you're working with somebody, if you're a green kid, don't be scared to say, I don't know how to do it. Like, yeah, the I'm not comfortable. North Carolina, and I just, okay, boom, boom, small package of me. Well, the guy didn't know how to fucking small package. Mm. Well, fucking let me know. It takes me two seconds. I can teach you in two seconds. <laughs> give me a small yeah. package. Boom. I actually, I, I can put it in. I can put myself put in a small in package. Yeah. Just, but just fucking say something. Don't do it when there's paying people there. Fucking. You know what I mean? Paying the watch is do our thing. And 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 you fuck it up and make us look like idiots. You know what I mean? But you know, they can do uh, all this willow, willow of the wisp and the uh, yeah. poetry in motion and all these like the terms that like I'm I guess I guess I'm supposed to know because that's like what the Hardy Boys call their moves, right? Poetry in motion or something. <laughs> but I'm coming to the locker, I'm like, what the fuck is poetry in motion? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, that's when he uh, gets on your hands and knees. This guy comes, jumps, and oh, what the the Hardy Boys do? He goes, oh yeah, okay. But they're using all these these names of these moves. It's like fuck. I don't even know what half the shit is anymore. Well, uh, did I tell you the story about? I told you the story about New Jack. Didn't no, I? go ahead. About I almost got him killed. Oh no! Please do. Oh, I love Jack stories. Oh. <laughs> all right. I've never had a problem with New Jack, but one of the guys did. Okay. He Jack had the staple gun. It was like he was going to use it, and he, they got into an argument. And he, Jack was like, "I wasn't going to use it." And he was like, "Yeah, no, you weren't going to use it." So I wasn't going to let let you. So they're mm-hmm. arguing back and forth. So they bring Jack and Pondo in, and Jack is my partner. And we're working Pondo and the other guy. I don't want to. I don't want to mention names because I don't want to throw people under the bus or anything. So I, I end up. Pondo is double jointed and can take his leg and turn it around where his foot is facing backwards. Wow! So 
to calm everything down to, to cool everyone. I go, I told Jack, I go, you stay with Pondo. I'll work with the other guy and we'll do the stuff. And then you do the, you jump off the top of the truck and go through the table. And when you go through the table, Pondo, you lay there and sell it. <clears throat> Don't move. Just lay there like you broke your leg. And I'll just like screw this and walk to the back. Like you're really, I, I played it off like he got hurt for something stupid. So th there we are we're going to the spot. It was an outside show. It had been raining earlier. Goes up, jumps off the truck, goes to the table, Pondo sells the leg. I just, one, two, three, head to the back. Get to the back. Luke Bushwhacker is like, mate, what happened? I go, Jack wanted to do that stupid move and jump off top of the truck. Said it was raining and he slipped and came down and broke Pondo's leg. I go, now Pondo's hurt. And he's like, oh, well, no. And if you've ever been around Luke when he's panicking, it's hilarious. Mm. <laughs> so he's running around, oh, 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 oh. No, it's like, he's trying to go, we yeah, an ambulance. So we go to the locker room. Jack comes in there. He starts going off on me. He's yelling at me and cussing me. And this is after the incident where he stabbed that kid in Florida. Oh, yeah. So everyone was aware of this. And I just started going back off on him. So me and him now are arguing back and forth. And he's on one side of the locker room and I'm on the other side. And I had the kendo stick. And uh, so uh, he's sitting there arguing with me. I go, you're the idiot that stuck put the table up and done the move. I'm like, screw you. So, what are you going to do, stab me in front of everybody? And then you hear the locker room. was like, oh. And Jack was like, oh, no, you didn't. Pulls out this <laughs> knife. Starts coming towards me. And there I am holding the kendo stick. Well, my buddies, they were drug dealers down there. <laughs> they were <laughs> I, don't, I can't I can't say what they what their job was, but they they worked also. But they were brothers. Well, Jack was gonna walk right in between them while one brother was getting ready to hook the arm and the other one had his hand on his gun and was gonna pull out and shoot him. And I see everyone else go to their bags to grab their guns and knives and everything. I'm like, whoa, 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 it's a joke. It's a rib. Pondo's fine. It's okay. And Jack starts laughing. Ah, we got you guys. So you worked and, everybody. Yeah. And uh, because no one knew about it. The only one who knew was the four of us. Wow. That's so, a good rib. Yeah. David Luke goes, that was a good one, mate. <laughs> we'll see how funny it is Monday when you get your pink slip. <laughs> 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 but... Then I had to work Jack later, and he goes, I'm going to pull this Wolverine claw out, and I'll stick it in your head and get your color and all this. I'm like, Wolverine claw? What do you mean, like Wolverine claw? And I'm sitting there, I'm, I'm confused seeking a Wolverine claw. I'm like, but he got like a little hook or something. And he had the brass knuckles with the blades out to here, the Wolverine. How the hell did he travel through airports with that thing? Yeah. No idea, but I thought it was the stupidest thing in the world because I at least try to make my stuff look real. Yeah, I try to make it believable. And if you pull out that and you don't just start stabbing someone, <laughs> right. you're an idiot. Yeah. 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 So I I I got hot, and I because he wanted to do this spot, and uh. I went to Savio. I'm like, man, screw you guys. I quit. I'm like, that's stupid. He wants to pull out this Wolverine claw and stick it in my head. And I'm like, huh? And so Savio was talking to him and he's seen that. He goes, oh, I collect knives. So Jack gave it to him as a gift. And then right before the night, I, he, so I was like, there, I got taken care of. And then right before the match, my music's playing. I'm getting ready to go to the ring. And Jack's running around. Where's my knife? Where's my knife? And they hand it back to him. 
And I was like, man. And whenever he he did it, he put it on my head. He didn't. He didn't cut me or anything, but he did cut me because he had it on there when he went. It, it, he nicked me, okay. but still, it's yeah. like I didn't trust. Really didn't trust him, right? But he was always cool with me. I yeah. didn't ever have any problems. I just thought that was stupid to pull out a Wolverine claw and right. <laughs> Freddy Krueger claw. Renee, that's why I always hated the. I always thought the the uh, what 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 did Hunter use? The sledgehammer. I always thought that was the dumbest thing ever. Who's gonna use a sledgehammer? You put your hand over the top of it. It's like right, and, and not like crush someone's skull with it or fucking. You hit somebody with a sledgehammer, they're dead. They're they're done. They're dead. Yeah. That's over. I Man, I've been doing it wrong all these years. I wonder why every time I went and used a sledgehammer and I put my hand on it. I'd always hurt my hand. <laughs> well, now you'll never get a job with WWF there, Maven. I was expecting that call anyway. <laughs> good to see you, Flash, Maven, James, and Renee. It's okay, Renee. Judy Bagwell called and said, good <laughs> <to Renee." laughs> Hey, did you guys did you guys catch that? Uh, that no, episode? did you? I did, and oh. I I knew I would say probably thirty percent of what they you know, what they told about Buff. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, I have I got some good you know Buff stories from back just doing indie stuff after I left, and he was on the indies, and I had no clue. I had no clue his mom was as much of a gangster as she was. I had no idea. I always heard the stories that she called the office and everything, but I didn't know to what to what level. Like I didn't know they had a lumber yard and all that shit. Evidently, like multi millionaire, like he yeah. didn't need the wrestling business financially huh. at all. Not at all. Yeah. Wow. I got to watch like, that. He it's 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 actually a good like that episode was good. Like I watched the Terry Gordy one last week, and I was just it was so sad. Like yeah. just. Yeah, well, I mean, Terry Gordy, that, that is my childhood. That's right. my childhood, you know, yeah. and and it's just, yeah. But, you know, it's it's the Mark one. Like, I know Mark's doing better now. So right. it's, you know, it, it was just a, but it was very entertaining. And just, I was like, holy cow. You don't realize just how crazy his life's been. Gordy was, Gordy was my age when he passed away, right? 40. 40. I couldn't believe that. I could not believe I could, that was the shock of the century because to me, back when he was doing the free bird stuff, he mm. looked like he was 40 then. Right. <laughs> like right. he, yeah, unbelievable. And he was in his 20s. Man. All those guys, man, like Jake the all of them. Michael, man, Hogan, they were all like in their 20s, but they all looked like men. Yeah. Right. Dude, they lived, yeah. they, they lived hard. <laughs> they lived hard. Like when we think we when we think we were on the road and doing crazy shit, uh, uh no, nah, nothing compared to, the, to what they were doing. No. <laughs> like they would literally, they would literally get out of the ring, start drinking, go to the bar, and get in fights and everything. Like it was, like it was nothing. Wow, it's yeah. just crazy. Yeah, I guess that in a way the the way. The business is now is better in in a sense more you know what I mean more tame and corporate I guess when I mean, guys ain't dying fucking like get every two well, weeks like they were yeah. in two thousands right that is true I when I was with Booker um I was down at Booker School a couple weeks ago and yeah. I I ran into um to into uh, Mace and he was telling me that backstage. I, this I couldn't believe, Renee. He said, "Oh yeah, it's nothing to, uh, you know." We get backstage and you know, we pull out, break out a, a couple game consoles, and everybody just sits around and plays video games. This is WWE. Can't... Yes, yes. Fuck, I remember I... John Michael said that shit banned. I can't <laughs> picture that. Can you picture that? No, no. I, I remember, remember John Michael's banning that yes. shit. Back, 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 I remember. Back I, I remember. The, um, there was a pay. I forget what pay per view it was, but there was a pay per view I walked into. First ever pay per view I was at, and I walked back um, backstage, and there was um, 
Billy Gunn sitting there with a big dip in and about 12 other guys watching a NASCAR race. And to think that it's went from that to guys playing Mario Kart wow. just blows my mind. Wow. I, I can't I can't fathom it. Well, well I, I was in the I was in the parking lot. <laughs> in a car somewhere <laughs> with some chick <laughs> and then I had, had to make sure you're done out of there and leave the building and, and so you're not wasting any time <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing about- was you had to make sure the girl it was like the girls that would come to the show you want them to come back next week right? so don't be a fence builder and then all of a sudden, you, you, you keep them coming. Then the girls show up. Then the guys are going to show up because they're there trying to hook up with them. Yep. And they're there because they want to hook up with the boys. Yeah. And then the boys, the boys are their own worst enemy. Because then they said they become fence builders. And then they get married. And then they, they killed that territory. Mm. <laughs> so... Maven, how about a Paul London crossover video down at the K Favorite Cat I'm any hard to train wrestlers the right way? Love to do that. Shit, uh, yeah. I would love to do that. That would yeah, that's a that's actually a good you think Paul would do it? I, so I hope so. I'm trying to get you guys um ho- I would love to do together. that. We did I did the a uh, Booker uh, video with Booker T where he broke down the, the supermarket scene oh. with him in Austin. Okay. And it was just, and it was literally just fun, you know, just having Booker. And there was no one in his school; it was just us. And and yeah, I was like, yeah, this is the direction I'm going to have to end up taking this thing, right? You know, right. I, I I can't talk about how, you know you know how much shit cost on the road and and you know what to do and what not to do. I mean, that's going. I'm going to run out of shit eventually. Exactly. So I'm going to have to I'm going to have to move into a new direction, and I would love to do something like that. And Paul would do. Oh, idea you had about taking your show on the road, man. Fuck yeah, exactly. dude. We're gonna no, we're gonna do that. Bro, I man. still think that's. I think that is the best idea, man. I guarantee you, we would get so many messages, and we'd be diverting every day to go to somebody's school or go to some place to meet to meet up with people. Oh. I think we could be on the road for at least two months. <laughs> for six months, I'll do it for a year straight. Fuck yeah. Man. Maven, are you doing to do meet and greet? Because I know some of the promoters who love to have you in Los Angeles, California, making an appearance at their store. There you go. I, I mean, like, it's just, it's tough. Like, I leave now every, probably like every six weeks for, yeah. you know, a week. And I'm flying to South Dakota to film. And, you know, between that and work, it's just tough. I'll do stuff usually around my house. Yeah. But to... If I'm if I'm leaving, there has to be something on the back end of it, and I don't mean just money. Like there has to be something. Like I can I can meet up with my guy and we can get some get, get some videos done or something. Right. You know. I yeah. I hate I I hate it. I I turn down more way more stuff. Really. Than, it's just it it doesn't make sense to me. Like I I mean I still have a damn day job. You know. Like like when I quit that when I quit that then I'll do them all. Yeah. But until yeah. then, yeah. When's the last time you were in Puerto Rico, Flash? Not too long ago, eh? Uh, yeah, it went long ago. It was uh, February. 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 Were you there? With, were you yeah. there with? Were you there with Pete Gas? No. Uh, I when I, I when I got really I got released in two, uh, July of two thousand two. Then I went to TNA, and that was I went to TNA in August. It was August twenty third. Was like my debut in TNA, and I was there two weeks and realized how screwed up it was there, and I quit. And I went to Puerto Rico, and I was there from two thousand two to two thousand seven. Do it all together. I I finished it up in like two thousand eight. Uh, you, I'm the only guy I think that has had a job. I worked for IWA. On um, the one night I was working for him, 
I quit and walked out, went to work for the other company, got to there, talked to Savio. You know, I was on the phone with Savio. I quit working for Carlos before I worked for him, went back to work for Savio and got fired. <laughs> so, <laughs> and like I was so burned out, I, I got fired from a job twice. <laughs> <laughs> And I walked away from it, but I needed it. I had to get away from there because I, I was so hooked on Somas. It yeah. was it was bad. It was yeah. whenever whenever you know how many Somas you can take and what time you're going to wake up. Yeah, it was yeah. like okay, I can take this many. I'm going to wake yeah. up at this time. Right, and it was bad, especially whenever you just. Go down the street. Oh yeah, here, brother. Yeah, when you when you know how many to leave your house to fly with, that you'll be good. Uh, <laughs> I I remember I used to count them out. I knew exactly to the number how many I needed. <sighs> yeah. Plus, I never I never seen a place where the more you bought, it, you get a discount. <laughs> That's Puerto Rico, right? I'd buy I'd buy a bottle of it, get a thousand of them, and instead of be it'd be five hundred bucks normally, but because you bought so many of them, it was four hundred dollars. Wow. So you got you might as well go ahead and buy a thousand of them get the seven hundred dollars. Because I told you last, I told you last time I talked to you, like when I came home after I took I bought a, a bottle home and I went through a thousand of them in a week. Jesus Christ. Yeah, those days for me. And, uh, no I don't know how I didn't die. Please, please don't leave us flesh. Don't leave us. Love all you got around. around. If there was ever <laughs> two people I'd love to go for a drink with and shoot the breeze, it's Renee and Maven. Maven, you're a true inspiration. Oh my God. I don't that thank you. Thank you. I uh I think I think uh <laughs> my days of, of going out and having drinks and, and I'm more of a laid back kind of chill guy. I'll still do it. I'll still do it. But I'm not the guy, you know, trying to go to every strip club anymore and you know <laughs> hit every bar. Uh, I'm the guy that's going to sit in there and just want to. I'm like the gri the grizzled old vet that will sit and tell old war stories. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I seen something that it was they were talking about. I don't know if it was your podcast or someone else's, but they were talking about you, Renee. They're like. Yeah, because they're talking about the Bob Holly thing and all that. Yeah, and then like, but he he keeps saying how he was he, he was nineteen, he was a kid, I'm like, but look at him, he he's, he's bigger than most guys on the guys in the locker room. That don't mean anything. You're still you still are young, Man. and you've got the yeah. mind of still you're you're just getting out of high school. It was Booker who said that. Booker. It was Booker, I remember, because when we done our response video when we first started, um, that was his thing. He was like, oh, he's bigger than most of the guys. So even though you was 19, it was Booker who said that. Yeah. I remember. Yeah, but when you're a 19-year-old kid, you know, you're... Wow. You're thrown out on the road. Hey, yeah. what do you expect? You're going to have a blast. <laughs> no, you're gonna you're gonna fuck up. You fuck up when you're a teenager, right? You do Dude, shit, right? I was I was 25 terrified scared out of my mind i can't imagine being 19 and in that environment because you're with you're with grown men here's what here's what's crazy what most people don't realize about a wrestling locker room everybody's the fucking prom king everybody's the home the homecoming king is the quarterback of their high school you know a wrestling locker room is like a high school but every guy back there is the alpha male of their yeah. school everyone yeah, you know, and yeah. it's just like you get all those A type personalities together, and it's tough. It's a tough environment. And then you got a boss that allegedly, allegedly likes to allegedly <laughs> it on women's heads. You know, well, what's your thoughts, not Maven? The <laughs> Vince McMahon drama. The, what one of my thoughts on? You made it? a video yeah. on it, didn't you? Yeah. Um, like again, I haven't had a relationship with Vince in over 20 years. So, you know, from, to me to say, I don't, I don't care either way. I, like, honestly, whether if, if it's, if he's guilty and evidence proves that he's guilty, I hope he gets what's coming to him. And, you know, and I hope whoever needs absolution, I hope whoever needs, um, 
you know, whatever they, whatever they need. I hope they get it. You know, I know one I mean, thing. That's not that normal you, taking a dump on someone. It's not, not in this household. <laughs> OVW it was normal. <laughs> I, 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 I do know it, it. It's, I'm a firm believer that the answer to every question in life is money. That's the answer to every question. And it's just amazing how everything is rooted, rooted in just money. And, you know, I, for the life of me, I will never understand if it was a couple million dollars. Why didn't he just pay? Right. Like I, I, for the life of me, I will never understand that. It's like coachman, man. Coachman uh, had a similar story. He was owed money. Yeah. And, but, like you said, Vince has that amount of money in his back pocket. Yeah, the couch and, cushions. Yeah, right. And and he worked for him for twenty years, never had an issue. And he said, "quote said he'd never go back out of principle because just the way that, just the way that they went about doing business because it was a different company and he wouldn't yeah. pay him and it was just what like what the fuck." I bet it had a lot to do with just power, just exerting power over and dominance over somebody. That's, that's you know, hey, hey, you did that. We owe you. Yeah, well, sit back down. We'll pay you when we're ready. Right. Power yeah. trip, right? Yeah. Renee, how old are you now? 40, man. You fucking just stretched. You you look great, dude. You still look fantastic, brother. Look at you. I got nothing else to do, but the world. I'm yeah. fucking Canadian Maritime. Yeah. Do you know how boring it is up here? There's nothing but yeah. doing with weights. Well, they 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 evidently changed that changed the hours all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember I remember I asked uh, we were speaking of Bob Holly. I asked Bob one time. I was like, Bob, man, what the hell do you do when you go home when you're off? Because I was for the life of me, I just can't. I just imagine Bob out in the yard, just mad, just yelling at trees and shit for you know, you know, you know drop your leaves, shut up, you're, you're keeping me awake. And I was like, what do you do? And he, you know what he told me? He's like, I sleep and I grow. <laughs> he said he grows. His whole life is just lifting weights, right? Training, yeah, and, and racing cars. You still look, you look great, buddy. You look fantastic. Thank you, man. Thank you very much. I apologize again for what we're sleeping. For now. looking good. I apologize man, for flexing like that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Maven, as a former Tough Enough winner, what are your thoughts on Daniel Pewter's WWE run in 2005? I think he... I... I think he entered it. He went into it with the entire wrong mindset. Like, he mm-hmm. could have, because he had a skill set that up until that point, no other you know person from Tough Enough had with the MMA background, right. and I think if he would have just and he had a good, I mean, he was a good looking kid, and I mean, I don't know how much of a shooter he was, but I know that's what they build him as, and I, I mean, everybody's seen the legendary Kurt Angle thing, right? But I've I watched way too many you know Kurt Angle rolling around with guys before shows to think that. Anybody was getting the better of Kurt back in that or in those early two thousands. Uh, anybody, right? Like so, like for for <laughs> sell sell that to someone else to to for, to try to make me believe that Pewter got the better of Kurt. I remember seeing him in the ring rolling around with guys, and he it, he was just a different breed. He was an animal, oh and God. he had a switch he could flip on and just go. But like Pewter, I don't know if he would have just kept his mouth shut and just learned, you know, you know, shut this, open these. And and I probably could have done something good. I do like I think he was a very there's just some people that are just easy to not like. And I think he was just a guy that was easy, easy to not like. Yeah, I mean, I try to get along with everybody, but he will always talk about business and business and like business. Like what he was going to do with his money. I mean, I'm sure he's successful, but whatever he's doing, he's probably successful because he's very, like, yeah, business minded. Yeah. But you could tell, like, okay, this pro wrestling thing to him is just, he just think he just wanted the money, right? Yeah. 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 Maven, how do you balance your full time job doing YouTube and still making any appearances? Love the channel. Oh, that's it's tough. I'm I I've cut back on a lot of my indie indie stuff. 
just because it's 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 hard for me to justify, you know, taking a Saturday where I'm home, yeah, and you know, going, you know, two three hour drive for a couple hundred bucks, and then two three do the show, and then a couple hours back. Right. It's hard for me to justify that now. And right. like I said, if I'm going to be gone for almost a week, uh, it's it's going to be I need to see you know the back end of it, which doing the YouTube that that's where I'd rather spend my you know not only my money you know but my my energy. Right. So it's 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 tough, you know, because I still have my do I'd still have my full time job. Mm. It's smart you didn't give that up. Hey, Maven, when you were released from WWE, was TNA or New Japan ever an option for you, or were you dumb in wrestling when you were released? It was, uh, Japan, I went to Japan once and realized really quickly it was not for me. I, like, I just, I'm not a, I'm not a good enough wrestler to, and they, you know, Japan, they, you have to be a good wrestler because they, you know, they want you to, they're not as character driven you know, right. they're, they want to see good wrestling. And, yeah. and yeah, if I, if I'm going to get over, it's going to be because of character. It's not going to be because of my mat wrestling. That's for damn sure. So I realized really quickly that Japan was not for me. And mm. I, I did, I did the TNA like equivalent to the house shows with UWF. I did those for two years and other, I just literally had other opportunities that were just too good to pass up. You know, and I was, I'll be honest, man, I was bitter. I was pissed off. I was so mad that I was released that I just, I, I wanted like, like I was, I, I had the, you know, fuck wrestling mindset for a while. Right. Cause it's weird when you go, when you give your all to something and then in one phone call, three minute phone call, it's told it's taken away from you, man. That, that's a, that's it takes a while to get over that. Yeah. Maven. There's no one that knows that more than me. <laughs> I, I I started I I was in high school and I started and I I finally I, I got signed in 90, uh, 99 and then in 2002 I got released and it was it was one of those first it was Jim Ross was hey keep up the good work you're going to make a lot of money in this business kid and he's telling Austin, and he goes, this, this kid reminds me of Jake Roberts. And I'm thinking, man, I'm hoping they're not thinking the drugs or anything, because I didn't do anything at the time. Mm. And the only, and when they, they would sit there, everyone would think I'd be all, like all these drugs. And I like, no, I ended up, I got hooked on somas. That's all I ever did. And then I, I take some Vicodins for the pain, but I never done anything else. Right. And uh, uh, where were we? Uh, so the uh, so Jim Ross gives me that story, and then he got replaced with Johnny Ace, and I was working Batista, and he and I I would do the Bagwell either the blockbuster, and right. I called it the Whiplash. So I'm I go to do the move, and Batista spears me in the air, one two three. I get back to the back. Johnny's going off on me. Then what are you doing that move for? You're going to wind up getting hurt. Next thing I know, I see him doing it on TV up there. Yeah. I'm like uh, there was so much stuff I got yelled at for what I'd done, and then I would see someone doing it. Yeah. 2010, Orton got me a tryout, and. <clears throat> It, it was one of those. I'm sitting there watching these guys. They're, they come in there. Oh, my name's so and so. I've always wanted to be a pro wrestler and all this. This is their promo they're doing. And I'm thinking, this is what? What is this a rib? Uh, you guys want a promo? I'm like, all right. So I started doing, I was going to do the, the Flash of Mania. Where Hulk Hogan had always talked about one of these days, one of these kids that grows up, trains, says the prayers, eats the vitamins, believe themselves, believe in Hulk Hogan, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to have to face and find out if I am, if he's the chosen one. So that was my whole bit. So I talk about, 
I, I came from Puerto Rico. I wrestled the alligators. I swam with the sharks. And here I am, I, right here at WrestleMania, Undertaker, I'm going to end the streak. Well, the next night, Johnny Ace just goes off on me and catering in front of everybody. So now you, you said that you wanted this chance and I give you an opportunity and you go out there and do this stupid Hulk Hogan crap. And he goes, what's wrong with you? And then the next thing I know, uh, Curry Henning's son is doing Axel Mania. I was like, wow. no. Wow. At that point, they should have hired you for their their development, for writing team or something. But, well, right. the the next, I mean, the other gimmick I had, I always wanted to do was carry the karaoke band, where you, you go out there, all right, everybody, like, all right, Cleveland, are you ready? And then follow the bouncing ball, and then the ball is playing on, on the screen, and you're singing. And all of a sudden, you're like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. You guys suck. I go, you just ruined the song. I go, just let me do it by myself. And then start singing, and I'm the one that's really the lousy singer, because I really can't sing at all. I, my teacher in school used to kick me out of class because she thought I was goofing off. And I was just that bad. <laughs> <laughs> Who? Oh, what's the pissed off you ever saw Hunter get? Uh, every time he was around me, <laughs> he hated me. We, um, you guys we, remember we, Mitch from the Spirit Squad? Yes, he hated him. Did he? Oh, he hated him. Whatever he happened to him? him? Um, he was good. I thought he was good. Mitch from the Mitch from the well, Spirit Squad. Hold on. What one of the Spirit Squad member? Kenny was Kenny. Kenny, he, Ken Doan, he's an agent now. At the, for WWE? Yeah. Oh, okay. He was the one that was good. He was really good. Yeah. Mitch, he's the one that no one liked, though. He, I heard he had tons of heat. Um, He was young. He was really good, but he knew he was good. Mm. Right? Yeah, because wasn't uh, he like, he was another you, wasn't he? Wasn't he? Like, didn't he come in like after high, like after school ended? He would come like much, he was in yeah. high school or something. Yeah. He was like a but, uh, fucking prodigy. Yeah, he got hooked up. Um, I think with he did everything you're not supposed to do at that point in time, like get engaged to one of the girls. I think he was engaged to Mickey James. That was a big no no. And then um back then, yeah, couldn't do stuff like that. Because obviously Vince and Johnny Ace had to have the dibs first. <sighs> <laughs> Allegedly. 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 So we hey, real quick, answer, answering the Hunter one. We went one there was one night, me, Orton, and Jindrak, and for whatever reason, Hunter was riding with you know Rick and they had something to do to get ready for evolution yeah. the, the next night. And they and Hunter, so Hunter tells, you know, we're going to the steakhouse. You know, come come eat, Randy. They wanted to talk to Randy. So of course, we you know go, and on the way, Jindrak had this this bright idea to let's see who can call Hunter Paul the most times at dinner, mm. and I, I probably did it maybe four or five times. Randy maybe the same. Jindrak ran away with it. He must have said Paul's name seventy five times. <laughs> He's just Paul. When you're doing the thing, well, what do you think, Paul? Paul, how long is uh, how long is the trip to uh, you know to the next town? Paul, did you order the steak? Paul, how'd you get your steak you know, cooked? It, it was, and the more it happened, the more you could just see Hunter fuming inside. Wow! Because you know you you like you know Jen Drax like how he was just yeah fun and it just and oh it was hilarious. Jen Drax did that to me. Him and David Flair, we have to weigh in. When we got there, we had to weigh in and see how much we weighed. Yeah. And they saw my name because no one knew my name. And as soon as they saw my name on there, they thought that was like the greatest thing in the world because they just rid me and called me up my name all the time for that. As I was like, again. <laughs> you really think they me Flash? <laughs> no, my name's Chris. <laughs> it's funny. My wife's, her brother's name's. Christopher Michael, and my name is Christopher Michael. 
Uh, we just asked different last names. If Punk would have debuted a couple years earlier than he did, he would have been jawed by Coachman so that Coach can get more heel heat, in my opinion. Maybe you're right. Well, I, could, I mean, that's... Yeah, I, I could see that. I mean... Joey Styles. Oh, my God. Oh, we're talking about quotes earlier. I guess. Ah, uh, uh, okay. Yeah. Will WWE ugh, lose popularity in the next 20 years? What do you think is going to happen, maybe with all this shit? I, I think they're going to have to about face, go in a new direction, and just the biggest thing for them is going to, and they're starting to scrub Vince. If, I don't think you'll ever be able to totally scrub the McMahons away from wrestling, right. but if they can just do a do a 180 and get people to where when you think of wrestling, you automatically don't think of this, right. I think they'll grow, get bigger than ever. And the reason is is because nowadays guys guys become stars in their own right. They don't need like we needed a company. Right. You know, it wasn't until Cardona showed everybody the way that you can you can become a star on your own. Mm -hmm. But now you can become your own star. And then if you have the engine of the WWE pushing you at the same time, then you're going to I think you, it could be bigger than ever. That's why they bring in someone like a Logan Paul. I mean, does Logan Paul need WWE? No. Hell no. no. Hell no. But together, it's a good match. I mean, it's a good it's a good fit because he brings his viewers in. They obviously add something to the to the mix, right. and I just see it. I see it going in that direction more. What's your thoughts on the the Rock's current run? I, I think it's. I mean, hell, it's better than him wanting to run for president. So like, <laughs> I'm happy. I, I'm happy he's doing this. He the guy looks like a million fucking bucks. My Jeez. God, he looks Dude, everywhere I go. He looks amazing. That Brahma Bull logo, yeah. Under Armour. It's everywhere, man. Yeah. Oh he's my God. Just, like he's just like he. I, he's just he's a one of one. You know yeah. when they when they say somebody's generational, yeah. like and I saw I saw and I it was hard for me to to agree with this, but I saw where Flair recently told him that. You know, you're the one, man. You're you're even more entertaining than I was. And I mean, I grew up on Flair. Like I, I to this day, if I still want to be entertained, I go watch those old Flair promos from the '80s. Yeah. And, and like to me, they're the just the best. Right. But I, Rock's just in a different class. Like he's just different. Yeah. Man. You know? Well, I was with but, you when he was Flex Cabana. Flex Cabana, wow! I, yeah. I would have never thought at the yeah. time he would be as big as he was. Well, if but, you look back at those pictures, he looks like a different human being now. Like he doesn't even look like the same guy. I saw him on the, I saw the rundown on from two thousand and three. He doesn't even look like that guy anymore. But what I mean, he can't, he can't do this forever. I think he's doing it, and he's on the board. So I think he's doing what he needs to do. To you know, just get the get the product over. But I, again, you know how he is. Hollywood's gonna come calling. He owns a, a professional football team. I'm assuming that takes some effort. You know, you know he'll he'll get it to a certain level, and then I think he'll fade off into the distance. He, he owns the league, not just the team. He owns the fucking league, Renee. The league, the league. yeah, yeah. Flex, huh. flex, fucking Cavana. Owns a football league. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's amazing. WWF New York and WWE Niagara Falls. Missed uh, opportunities, wrong place, the wrong time. I have seen them, but I was never there when they were actually I, open. My hands, and I don't know if they're still there, but I did the hands in the cement and signed my name at the Niagara location. Me and Big Show were there. Sweet. And we, yeah, we did it on the same day. I just, I, like, I, I love WWF New York. I thought it was a great idea. But, yeah. yeah, I mean, my God, that rent probably, Times Square, 7th Ave, that rent's probably 50 grand a month, if not more. 50 you know, a month, right. You right. got to be, I know how much we pay for to be an exchange place in Wall Street. And right. our rent's 31 grand a month. So, I mean, that's Times Square. You got to be selling an awful lot of fucking chicken fingers <laughs> for that. 
But to think though how big they were that because they that was there for what a few years. 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 I remember they used to send us there to do to like like when I broke my leg, they sent you know, rather than have me home collecting a check doing nothing, they would fly me up to New York and have me host Raw there. And wow. you know, and obviously, you know, we would host do the show, but then people would come in and you do autographs and stuff. I think it was a great idea in theory. Yeah. I'm surprised they didn't put you in the back of the kitchen. <laughs> they they probably wanted to. They probably hey, wanted look to. here, we got baby yeah. back here cooking in yeah. the yeah. maybe you gotta, you, you, gotta, you gotta earn your money somehow, kid. There's some dishes <laughs> over there. When yeah. you weren't you there when they done the memorable spot with the uh, divas? Was it like divas undressed? Something yeah, like I was that? one of the judges. You was Me front row. No, I was one yeah. of the judges. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that was nice. Angela yeah. Dawn giving us well I, hugs your way too, sweetheart. Uh, you guys remember that episode of Raw where Vince, Shane, and the Spirit Squad got a huge pile of shit came from the ceiling from DX? You guys think Vince was basking it secretly and enjoying it? Yes. A hundred percent. that spot. <laughs> he loved it. He was his idea. Now, Spirit Squad was his idea. Get was it. that his idea? The Spirit Squad. Oh, I always thought that was Gerwart's idea. I heard it was straight from Vince that he wanted oh. cheerleaders. Hmm. He had some. It's funny how he could have some of the best and worst ideas, you know, come out of his brain ever. So what, you, you think the Goblin Gooker was a bad idea? <laughs> <laughs> they, had great have, talent, they had great talent planning. I didn't have Goblin Gooker on my bingo card for tonight. Yeah, good point, uh, Flat. You, you know who 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 Goblin Gooker was played by, right? Yeah, it was yeah. like uh, Hector Guerrero or something. It was something. fucking Eddie Biro's brother, uh, yeah. Hector. Yeah. Amazing. Well, he got paid for a few months. I remember, recommend watching the Randy Orton biography. Never knew he had a serious drug problem to the point where he had an accidental overdose in 06. Oh, the, the Orton that you see now is not the Orton Renee and I knew right. years ago. It's just not. And for the better. Like, like him having kids is the best thing that happened to him because it, it changed him. Like the Randy Orton that we were on the road with, like I've never met a human being as crazy as Orton was back for those five years, you know, mm. in the early two thousands. Oh. And well, I mean, how? Like, yeah, I'm sure you have some some stories down in you know Louisville. <laughs> he broke in with us down there. Yeah, we were. <laughs> We were a wild bunch. Yeah. Rip was the ringleader. <laughs> <laughs> um, Raven, Maven, what y'all tipping the scale these days? Y'all looking kind of skinny. Thanks again, Maven. Oh, my God. That's the best. Go. That's the best compliment you could give me. Wow. Like, thank you. Thank you. I, I listen, I weigh 230. I don't know what Renee Renee Ray Renee's two hundred and fifty pounds of twisted I'm about steel. And sex actually, appeal, I weigh man. myself today, yeah. Yeah. What do you weigh in the flash? Uh, it all depends. My weight goes from two thirty five to two sixty five to two forty five. It, it, I never know. You ever hit three hundred? No. No. The heaviest I've been was like two sixty five. Uh, and that was just out of shape. Completely embarrassing. I, I hit 300 pounds when I was living in England. And that Did was, you really? Yeah, that was, I think, subconsciously trying to kill myself. Holy just by exploding shit. my heart. Yeah, through. Holy shit. Yeah. Like, I, I, I mean, I've weighed, the most I ever weighed was 240. It's weird. And I remember Batista telling me once, don't let, don't. Do not let a scale tell you how you look. Let the mirror tell you. Mirror because I and he's right. I've weighed two forty and looked good, and I've weighed two forty and looked like dog shit. Yep. You know, so yeah. it's yeah. The weights are weight no matter. Weight, weights are relevant. Well, I know there are no VW. It's like after I got released and stuff, and I started seeing everybody how they looked. Like man, the water something. Yeah, here it was. It was good, but uh, I'm, I must have been drinking something on the toilet. 
<laughs> I, I could never get that look like that. <laughs> I tried. You you didn't they didn't send you to signature pharmacies? Did no. You to, did you go to signature, Renee? I'm I never got busted, dude. I was in that I was in that list of people. Were you? I was. But fortunately, they were just bigger name guys that I I like I oh yeah. I was good. I got all my shit from there. Wow. Hey, and you want to know what's and you want to know what? It was the best shit ever. It was so good. Really? Like, because it was human grade. Like most people don't realize if you're gonna get shit off the streets now, it's not it's veterinary grade. Unless you get unless you know somebody that knows somebody. This was stuff that was made for humans. I got the like it was phenomenal. Phenomenal. I just was like a gym rat and hooked up with other gym rats and then yeah that way I, my my whole mindset I guess I the one street smart part of me was don't leave a paper trail especially when you're in your a, a company that big that yeah. you had issues with that stuff before because Vince almost yep. went to prison back in the 90s. ten years earlier ten right. years earlier yeah so I knew that and it's like okay well I'm not gonna leave any type of paper trail right because nice well, is that when Vince whenever. He took everyone's finisher at the bar and had the neck brace on when he went to the went to court yes. and yes. used that for sympathy. Yeah, and milked that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> as soon as the trail is over, it rips off the fucking. But Renee, I heard you. Uh, I would say a couple of months ago in one of your what you and James when you were talking about how now the feds didn't forget about that. They did not forget about that, and now they're they're. It makes them want to get him a whole hell of a lot more. And I am 100% in agreement with you. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. It was a live edition of Raw. It was like a Halloween edition. He was dressed up like a, a like a prisoner. Yeah. <laughs> like mocking the fact that, you know. Rubbing like, it in their face. Like, yeah, you, you yep. get Yeah, absolutely. Things. Brother, they read the, the feds raided his mansion in Greenwich or Stan- Greenwich, right? That's where he had his yeah. big house. Yeah, and they got his phone, all his records, kind of like the the feds uh, raided Mar-a-Lago. Yes, oh, for all his fucking. Yep, they didn't want him, man. They didn't want him for something. Now, were you on SmackDown, Maven? I start when they switched. Well, when I first started, all the shows were together. We would do. We would start um, on Friday, and we would do Friday. Uh, yeah, no, we would start Saturday. We would do Saturday house show, Sunday house show, and then Monday we would film Raw, and then all of us would go and do and do SmackDown together. And then they would send us home on Wednesday. Once they split the show, I first went to Smack. I was hey, I was in the first draft. I was drafted tenth to SmackDown. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. Rock was one, I was ten. I was the number one draft pick in oh four. Oh four. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah cool, but I had different plans. Oh well. Hey, Maven, how were you able to jump so high during your run to the WWE? Much for the sake, dude. There was a spot, Flash, that Orton uh, and Maven would do a double draw kick at house shows, man, and they would fucking their feet would. Con- it, it was like the prettiest thing I've ever seen. It looked like art, just boom, and they hit off each other and just boom it was like a fountain like water fountain you know boom fuck man beautiful drop kick I'll tell you what if you get a chance they're on a watch the a dark match with me and Orton okay Orton what's it had, from is it what's it what year what year is it is it from OVW or is it from like a smackdown or it's on one of those DVDs okay and uh he throws the drop kick on me but he did the drop kick. But when he's doing the drop kick, he's doing a backflip and he oh, did yeah. the, a moonsault and he lands, does the flip, and lands down okay. perfect. And it was, it was great. And then the next night he did it with Steve Bradley, but Bradley didn't, but he posted enough. Him post, and yeah. When he th- came back, he landed on his head, about broke his neck. Yeah. So, oh, cut that out. Get your heat with the fucking office right there. Yeah, but he's a golden child, man. You can't uh, can't hurt him, right? Well, Hit thumbs up, maybe. Yeah. What's up, my guy, Renee? Give us a French tickler. <laughs> Not right now. My uh, 
The back doesn't feel like it, brother. Uh, Does Raven have any memories of Eddie? I Eddie was on. Um, I I I said even in one of my videos, Eddie. After one show, I, for whatever reason, we were all out at a at a bar, and I find myself, you know, in the bathroom, and Eddie walks in, and at this point, I was on a, hey Eddie, how are you? Shake hands, and then go about and wouldn't say another word to Eddie the entire day of the right. show. He was just up here, you know, and I'm, he's doing main events and I'm wrestling, you know, heat velocity or, you know, first or second match on, you know, whatever show. Yeah. But for this one, this night, he literally stopped me in the bathroom and explained to me what, what I did in the match that could have been better if I would have just done this and, and his passion and explaining it to me. And it was like the first time ever that Eddie was taking, going out of his way to, you know, to give me any, any type of help. And I would take any criticism he had. And like, literally that was my one time of having Eddie all to myself. And, you know, because Eddie's one of those guys that he's, you know, by the time he had passed, he had he forgotten more wrestling than most guys will ever learn. Yeah. Eddie was cool. Yeah, he was just like, he knew. Like and he, and his there. and his brain, he just knew so much. Yeah. Like yeah, those matches, so those matches him and Chris had, oh. they were like they're legendary. They are fucking legendary. But just that uh, he he knew every style. He could do like the, yeah. the Memphis style, like they call it, the Gu the yep. Paga. Okay, then he wanted to do luchador stuff with like Ray, yep. that the high spot shit. He could do that. He could do anything. Anything. Yeah. And he was funny. Or oh, he wow. could go or he could go an hour and, like it was nothing. That's it. That's yeah. it. Man, well, I was telling you about that match with Orton with that drop kick. I had surgery on my arm. I still had stitches in my elbow. I had the surgery on a Wednesday. Batista picked me up from the hospital. I went and did OVW that night. I just did a promo. Then I did Raw that Monday. And that was the other match I had. And when Orton pressed me, and I hit the mat. My elbow hit the mat, and it, it swelled up. And I was in there. I was taking a needle, and I was sticking it in there, draining it. Oh, you brought your bursa sack? <laughs> no, they they had removed it. Oh, like, well, I guess they removed it after the second surgery. So uh, that was it. And then they sitting there, and they were mad. When I got in the ring. I still had stitches. I'm like, well, I needed the money. Yeah. And Eddie came up to me. He's like, man, I've been there. I understand. I, I get it. And yeah. but they were on me about it. Uh, when you need money, brother. Grew up watching yeah. the ruthless aggression there of WWE. What would you say was the biggest challenge in WWE in those years in regards to your traveling? Trying to stay sane. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Traveling. With traveling. Oh, there's fucking little seats. And because you know then Honestly, you know what it was? Could have been too. It was before the days of the cell phones and ways and apps. We had big fucking Rand McNally road atlases. And I don't know how you guys are, but I'm geographically challenged. Like I like I still don't know when I put something in my in my ways now to get out of my house. Yeah. I still don't know the road it's trying to take me to as soon as I leave my house. I have no clue. I just start driving and I'm it reroutes me. But right. I, I I remember a many a nights being on the road and being like, man, we're going holding this big atlas up. Man, we're going <laughs> in the wrong direction. <laughs> when I met my wife, she made fun of me because I had the atlas in the back seat. She was Yeah. Don't you know the GPS? I'm like, what's the GPS? Yeah. I had no idea because I've been in Puerto Rico all this time. Yeah. So like I'm completely I'm com computer challenged, right. and mentally challenged. Right. Because when it comes to stuff on the computer, she's got to like hook. But she hooked this up for me because I have, <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> and like, I well, yeah, I I remember when 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 the rental cars when they started having those Garmin's and Hertz wanted to bend you over 
and add like twenty five dollars a damn day if you wanted GPS because they knew people were gonna take it <laughs> or before every car had GPS in it. Right. And How much is it to run a car these days? I'm thinking like, I, what's the expenses for a WWF wrestler now? Oh, huh. I'm wondering. I don't, I don't I know. know. Price of, the price of gas has gone fucking crazy up here. In what was when you were traveling? What 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 was y'all's car of choice that you would go towards? Me and Orton, we always wanted to get something nice. We uh, we were all full size yeah. just for comfort. Yes. Absolutely. I remember seeing, I, I want to say it was Rhino and, and Glenn Kane and maybe Stevie and somebody else pull up and they were in like a fucking Taurus. And oh, here shit. you got like four big guys getting out of this. And hey, they were saving money. They were saving money. Yeah. <laughs> they were saving money. What's a ticket cost nowadays when you get pulled over and get a ticket? Oh, God. Renee? Last time I got a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about oh no no the parking ticket the fucking parking ticket how much no seriously like, because I never seen the the receipt I never seen the bill for that parking ticket that you speak of with Bob Holly I've never seen the I I never seen I know there's one but I never seen it no it wasn't like it was it was I was at the gym he had flown home to Alabama. Because there was a hurricane, and he had to board up his parents' house, who lived right beside him, by the way. Yeah. And, and you know, the parking meter, that had expired that they gave me a parking ticket. Now, I get to the fucking, I'm like, shit, now, mind you, the, the whole time I'm on the road at this point, I'm on the road two years. I was 20, I had just turned yeah. 21. No, I was 20 years old. I never got a fucking ticket for anything in my life. So... I'm in Seattle, Washington, some different, you know, uh, state that I've never been in before. So I drive to the, um, I drive to the, the, to the building. And you remember Jan to cut the hair? Yes. yes. I run up to her. I go, Jan, can you cover me? I got this fucking ticket. I got to go pay for it. She goes, don't worry about it. You're not from this state. What are they going to do? Uh, How are they going to find you? Worst advice ever. Right, uh, they can't fucking find you. You're not. You don't have a house here. You're. You know what I mean. So just throw it away. I was like, really? Oh, throw it away? God. So I threw the fucking thing away. I didn't know yeah. that they could fucking go to the extent they went to and got Bob's rent car. Yeah, uh, they got his rate written yeah. down and then for him a bill for I don't know what's an ex five minute expired. What's that? Twenty bucks? Twenty five bucks? I, I, they probably banged him out for. I wouldn't think it'd be more than a hundred dollars. You would think. I you wouldn't think, think so. But the story goes, according to him, is that they had suspended his license. Uh, because of they, this, they were going to suspend his license. They were going to. Um, it was an eight hundred dollar fine. Jesus. He had to go to court for, which I gave him eight hundred dollars in cash. By the way, because when he I called me out on it. I said, I think you let got me rid. know how much it is. I'll pay you double. That wasn't good wow. enough for old Bobby Holly. No, 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 no. And but here's the thing. I've never seen the fucking, nobody's ever seen the fucking bill. Yeah, I think, I think you got ribbed. I think, I think ribbed, ribbed. Yeah, I got kicked. See the scar right here? Yeah. That's the fucking that rib. Head. That's where I got kicked wow. in the head. And uh, by the way, a hematoma exploded on the plane, which Triple H was on. At thirty thousand feet, and Paul London can access to it because he was on the plane. I almost bled to death in the, the pressure. Yeah. yeah, I watched. Yeah. I watched that. I was, I was listening about that. Paul and walked back in and opened it up. So it was like a horror movie. Yeah, there was blood everywhere because it was attached to an artery, right? Where you kicked me. And uh, remember, Doctor Rio Smaven? Yes. Yeah, he's the one that took it. Took out the hematoma in a Philadelphia. Um, um, the dressing room in Philly, right? So he takes out the hematoma, but instead of lancing, uh, uh, uh burning it, was when he burned it, yeah, he like cauterizing it, it. He didn't cauterize it, he lanced it. Yeah. They threw me back in the ring. Well, you know, the mat is the dirtiest fucking thing uh, right? on earth, <laughs> on so earth, you're rolling around that getting infected. Uh, so then, uh, two or three days, I'm working with Undertaker and main events, and fucking is busting open every night. So finally, they said, "Okay, we're gonna have to get this fixed." The Jewish Hospital in Louisville, you know, and that, Megan. Right? Okay, well, the Jewish Hospital in the in the, 
in Louisville. That's where they uh, set up the appointment. So we're in New York, touchdown in Cincinnati. As we're touching down in Cincinnati, I'm in the lavatory. The air pressure in the cabin changes. This thing explodes. And there's a fucking artery. Oh. And there's blood everywhere. Oh. Everywhere. And it looked like a fucking horror scene. Because Paul said when he opened the door to come check on him, he was like, you couldn't see up. Couldn't believe how much blood there was. So then they had paramedics come on the fucking plane and say, listen, if you get on this connecting flight from fucking Cincinnati to Louisville, which is only about 20 minutes, if you guys yeah. it, yeah. you could possibly die. Yeah. And yeah, you could have a blood clot and die. Yeah, clot. And you yeah. had died like two weeks before that was Chris Candido from a blood yep. clot. Absolutely. Yep. Because he wasn't supposed to be flying. Yeah, anyway. Yep. So, um, Hunter's on the flight, and so is a WWE trainer. And he looks at me. Chris, I'm not going to name names, uh, but it, he was from Texas, and he chewed tobacco. And he looked at me, and he goes like this, and he fucking says no because that a leaves paperwork, b would cost the company a shit ton of money. Yeah, so I I declined. I wrote my name that no, I'm not. I'm in case I die here on this connecting flight that you warned me that. You know, I could yeah. die. Yeah. yeah, it was your so, decision. Yeah. So when I landed back, as soon as I got to my apartment, you know what happened? Boom! The fucking thing exploded yeah. again. So I get to the, the Jewish hospital in Louisville. I don't even know where that's at. Flash. Uh, as I'm waiting and like to be called, the fucking thing explodes again. I'm I'm standing uh, in the middle of the hallway with blood roaring, just flushing down all over my face. They to emergency comes in, takes me and puts me into emergency fucking surgery. They carterize the fucking thing. <sighs> Over a $25 fucking parking ticket. And how much I, they had to put you on, like, I would say they probably had to put you on Keflex or some powerful antibiotic at that point. Uh, let's just say that did kickstart my panic killer reduction. Okay. All right. Fair can, yeah. Yeah. Uh, after the because yeah because after the initial fucking ass kicking the next night I got put into a hardcore match with fucking Bob and he wasn't done. Jesus, oh, yes, yeah, yeah, Bob, man. no, no, he went, he had to hit me with fucking steel chairs across the head after he had fucking hey. kicked me in the temple about fifteen times and bashed my head in with fucking steel chairs. Yeah. Oh, you remember Matt Capitelli? About... Remember Matt Capitelli? Yeah. Yeah, same thing happened to him. You know where he's at? Yeah, yeah, he's fucking dead. You know how? Yeah. Brain cancer. Okay. Sorry, you got me started. You get caught in one of those days. I just got up from a bad nap. Sorry, guys. Did he ever talk to you again afterwards, after all this happened, Holly? No. He can go fuck himself if he's watching this, too. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Maven and Renee, how much testosterone was commonly used by W. <laughs> right now, I'm running on about fucking 2,000 milligrams. <laughs> Do you think JBL is still going to therapy after getting his ass kicked by Joey Styles? No, but he will be the next time he runs into me because that's another motherfucker I don't like. Okay. I'm sorry, guys. Wow. I got all that Dude, going. I, I wasn't I wasn't getting stepping on that. I was letting you go. <laughs> Get some shit off your chest. Yeah. Wow, you just opened up a can of worms there, buddy. Sorry, guys. Get some uh, shit off your chest. I apologize again for being late. And over sleeping, I'm sorry, Maven. I fucking love you, Flash. Love you, brother. I want you to come on more often because uh, Renee, we got to get. Never together. thought about retaliation. Was that? You, did you had you never thought about like you know what? I'm gonna get him back one night. No, 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 no. not yet. But you know, he's still alive. Isn't he? Oh man, I, I, I did. I. I, I I worked for these guys, and it was I had the, the, had to make a choice. I either work for them or work for another guy, and the other guy was paying me three times what they were paying me. And I go, oh, I can't do it. If that's the case, I'm sorry, guys. No hard feelings, but yeah. I want to go there and work. And yeah. he's like, Well, okay, I understand. Then it was, Well, we're going to be running these shows. And you'll make that ma that money up. I go, yeah, but I'm working these other shows, so I'm making more money. So they ended up they were going to give. Hey guys, I gotta get, I gotta go 
I got dogs to walk. I'm getting getting the Iggy. All right, I, David, man. I love you, story. brother. And, uh, Flash, good seeing you, brother. You too. I'll see you. Yes, let's keep in contact. Let's, and definitely, yeah, I don't April. want to hear a Flash story. Definitely, let you let me know, and we'll get together. You yes. got my number. Uh, you still have, do I still have your right number? Shoot me a text. Uh, Just shoot, shoot me a text, text when we're done. Sounds I will. good. Okay, man. All, All right, right buddy. Brother. Take care. Bye, James. Later, brother. Bye. Take it easy. Look at the look at that. There's the um, air balloons. Welcome but uh, Victoria. they yes. sat there and told me I had to make a choice. I go, well, I'm staying here. And then all of a sudden, their TV show became the Flash Flanagan and show. Yeah. All they did was put a video package together, beat me up. Yeah. And then, then when they went to go, when they closed down, they were giving the other guy their TV spot. And I said, I wouldn't work with them. I go, I'm not doing it. And I go, because I, I just got back in at Danny's. I quit over there. And they're like, oh, man, it's just nothing about me, too. Let's let it go. I'm like, no, they show up. I'm, I'm messing them up. And I told Doug Gilbert, I go, Doug, watch my back. He goes, why? I go, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to attack these guys. And I'll, I'm getting them. He goes, oh, you're not going to do nothing. So I got on the mic and I told the one guy that I didn't have a problem with him because he was just a follower. Well, he jumps up, told me to kiss his ass. I took my jacket off and went out and kicked both their asses. Oh, boy. I sent well, him he... to the hospital. Yeah. They took me to court. So they didn't tell the judge they were wrestlers. They just said that they were. They bought a ticket, and I jumped out and attacked them. And I just told the judge the truth. It was part of the show. <laughs> so, Did off? Yeah. The well, judge was the wrestlers, and he was, I mean, yeah, it was. Oh, they didn't say that. Case dismissed. Awesome. Well, no, we're what? running late. We're running late, Flash. And I want to thank you for your time. And I'm sorry I'm fucking late, guys. I apologize. Never, it'll never happen again. It hasn't happened, and it will never happen again. Uh, James, thank you as usual. Did you uh, make the announcement that? We're all, we only be going live once a week starting, well, tonight's the first night. Wow. Um, the rest of the uh, the guests next Friday, it'll be Patreon only. So we'll be only going live on Mondays for the month of April. It's a test trial to see how it works out. And every other day, uh Fridays and Wednesdays will be Patreon memberships only. And this Friday we'll be having Paul London. But again, it's if you're a Patreon member, can you bring that up? Um Tell Paul I said hi. I will. I don't know if he'll remember me or not, but I'm he sure. was always cool. <laughs> but definitely we'll like to have flash different guests on the, the Patreon paid network will be coming on. But as far as going live, it'll be only on Mondays. For the rest of April. So from 6 Eastern to 8, usually, maybe 9, depending on who's on, uh, just once a week. Uh, did you bring up that? Uh, uh, you need to bring it up. I can't bring it up. I've typed it in the comments. There it is. So if you guys want to be a membership, Patreon, and what more of the cafe more than once a week, sign up. It's $5 a month. But we will still have our live shows on Mondays from 6 to 8 Eastern, possibly longer, depending who's on. Um, and, yeah, the Patreon shows will be great. It'll be in the first one. will be this Friday with Paul London and other special guests. But we will be coming on live on Mondays like usual with guests. And uh, we'll give you updates for the week. But there's the Patreon. If you're not yet signed up, sign up. We got WrestleMania is this weekend, isn't it? Uh, yes, uh, two nights in a row. So it's I'm tired now. So God help me doing it from uh, one a.m. to roughly half five, like two nights in a row. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, everyone support us, please, because I'm gonna be tired doing it. Yeah, if you want to sign up and uh, watch. WrestleMania with us. We're doing that on the Patreon as well. So uh, 
stand up. Yeah, please, because James is he's all in the UK and James, what time does it start? Three in the morning over there? One AM. One AM and it's probably gonna yeah, run until about six AM. Yeah. So uh someone's just said it's uh, how many tiers in the Patreon. It's just the one tier at five dollars. So like we said, uh you begin the exclusive live stream on f- Fridays, uh, WrestleMania on Wednesdays, weekends. We normally do a match of the week, but obviously this weekend we're doing WrestleMania uh, night one and two watch along. And uh, we also post like exclusive recordings on there. So a few people asked us about our opinion on the um, Vince McMahon and the uh, love letters that came out. We have actually recorded that. So that video will be uh, posted on the main YouTube oh, yeah. channel. Yeah, we'll still be uh, letting out clips every day and uh, clips from the Patreons that we shoot as well will be out every day with daily clips and a lot of compilations and stuff. As far as live shows for the month of uh, uh, of April, it'll just be Mondays live for probably two, two to three hours with the guests sometimes, sometimes not, but definitely guests on our Patreon exclusive for five dollars a month along with matches of the week wrestlemania Discord what else do we group. got uh discord watch group. alongs and I'll the, uh, the discord group as well for the, the discord fans. group which is a lot of fun were you there with jason was jason lee around ovw when you were there yes he was man <laughs> let's save that let's save those jason lee stories for the patreon when we have you back on buddy. well my my phone's about to die because i had Waited around like forty five minutes for someone, but uh, <laughs> I got much to get off here. Also, <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, listen. Last one: WrestleMania forty one, Renee Dupree versus six year old Bob Holly squash match. Don't miss it. The loser has to pay the rental car fee. Fuck yeah, that's a great idea. All right, Flash, thank you, James, thank you, and uh, we'll see you guys down the road. We'll see you this Friday for the Patreon members. Okay. Paul London Live.